everyone, it's Holly here and I'm in my backyard at the moment and I thought I would give you a garden tour. I've been meaning to do this for ages and I keep putting it off because I'm waiting for certain things to grow or finish or whatever so there's no time like the present so I'll show you around. Okay, so we may as well start with the front of the house. Um, we've only really started to plant things out the front of the house in the last six months. We put in these fruit trees. So we have a lime tree, blood orange, a mandarin, and a lemonade. They've been eaten by the grasshoppers pretty bad. Um, but I've just given them a good feed and now with the start of winter they'll be getting a lot more water. I've also just planted in some bulbs which I've never grown before but I've planted in some jonquils in between. So there and there and just all in between the trees so in spring I'll have beautiful nice smelling flowers all right so over here behind me we have my driveway pumpkin patch and I made that hmm, maybe six months ago end of last year 2019 um, because I had left over soil from doing this stuff I just had it piled up over here and so I spread it all out and made a pumpkin patch. So this is the second round of pumpkins I've got here. I had already picked eight earlier this year and then the vines came back to life and I have probably another eight more. Still growing in here, which will be good. So I also have eggplant in here, which is the little ones. I don't think there's any on here. There's heaps of little ones coming along. I've already picked heaps off here. Such a pretty plant. The leaves are beautiful, they're like felt. And in between, I've started to plant my winter veg. So I've got beetroots, some cabbage, some chard, um, onions, garlic, that's some garlic there, some onions, beetroot, a wild dill that's popped up from the compost, so I'm just leaving. I have like a little random zucchini plant that I know is a bit too late in the season and it is starting to get powdery mildew but We'll see if it survives. And it's another eggplant. Lots of little babies on this one. Some red onion thingies. These are like the spring onions. Like red ones. I don't know. Some chard. That rainbow chard. It's getting a little bit eaten. Another eggplant there. It's a big pumpkin there. Look at this guy. So yeah, this was pretty much just where I parked my car and I've turned it into a really productive garden bed for my large for like large space veggies like I don't have room for pumpkins out the back in my back garden because they just take up so much space and I don't really have much space out the back so this driveway was completely 
unnecessary. We already have another two driveways. So, um, yeah, the pumpkin patch was born. And it's working out so good. I'm also going to plant out here some um, of my bigger veg, like my um, cauliflowers, cabbages, uh, and things like that. You don't need the perfect place to grow veggies. I mean, the ground here is just compacted rocks and sand. But I just put some really good soil on top and I'm choosing plants that don't have really deep root systems. The pumpkin root system is quite sprawling and it's done absolutely fine as you can see. So, so this grass is horrible. I don't really know what we're going to do with this area here but I'm thinking about possibly putting in some more raised beds. All right, so over here, this garden bed, I've just pulled out um, like last week, was all sweet potato, um, but it was just getting overgrown by the creeper grass and it looked really messy. And um, so I've ripped it all out. And what I'm gonna do here is try and sort out this grass situation, get rid of all the runners from in there, and then lay down card cardboard, and heaps of mulch and I'm going to do like a tropical edibles in here and I'll be sorting removing this mess here and in, we've installed a another retractable hose from hose link so you won't even see it so good I'll be out of water all of this so make sure you subscribe so that you can see my tropical edible garden as it comes to life all right so that's pretty much the front yard we've got fruit trees we've got pumpkin patch and we've got new tropical edible garden coming um, the rest of it is a work in progress and hopefully I'll have some more garden beds out here over the next year um, but let's take a look out the back. Before we head out the back, I'll just show you, this is my kitchen um, and out the kitchen window is where my kitchen garden is um, and my compost. So as you can see, I have like all sorts growing on my bench. I have sweet potatoes there that I took from cuttings out the front when I ripped that out. It's need some more water but that is a lettuce I'm growing from scraps and my compost from today so I will take that out to the compost bin. All right so as you can see out the back we have heaps of concrete, we have heaps of pavers and not a lot of space for growing veggies but Halen has made me these pallet planters on wheels and if you've followed me on Instagram you would have seen these um, I've got a video on making these uh, on my channel so I'll link that video um, but yeah basically these are just pallet timber pallets heat treated timber pallets and put wheels on so that I can utilize this space out here because this space out here um, gets really good winter sun and the back garden gets pretty much fully shaded in winter so um, it's great to be able to utilize this really perfect growing conditions when previously I couldn't use it at all because it was just pavers. All right so this right here is my compost bin. I've got a tumbler compost. I used to have two but the other one broke um, it just fell apart it was second hand on um, marketplace and it lasted a few years but it just I kept trying to fix it and it just kept breaking so it is gone um, and I have just one now but I think 
I'm going to get a worm farm, some sort of worm farm system as well, so I'll have that. Um, but I have some more plans for this corner here, um, which you'll just have to wait and see. But the tumbler compost is really good. It's really close to my kitchen, so I can just empty the bowl whenever I need to, after dinner and things like that. What do we have growing in here? I have some chilies. These are the, like, I think it's the KN chili, so they'll go red. I've just picked all the red ones though, so there's only green ones on there. Uh, the Thai chili, this one's a purple chili. Um, this one's an orange chili. And then in here, I just have some like, some radishes. Oh, hey, garden pest. Um, yeah, some more radishes. And then I have some peas that are climbing up this Rio mesh. And then this one is just brand new, newly planted. I have some peas along here and then I just have random stuff. Um, beetroot, celery, some sort of cabbagey broccoli thing. Um, and then this one I planted a month ago, I think. So everything's a little bit more developed and I have Asian greens, edible flowers. This one's getting munched. Um, this is the dianthus and pansies, lettuce. Uh, I think this is the, um, Watermelon radish. I have some more chard, beetroots, watermelon radish, beetroots, watermelon radish. I think that's like a that's type of Asian green. More edible flowers, the dianthus. And then this little one over here has a red cabbage. And in here. I have another eggplant with lots of little eggplants on it. Um, and in here I have chard, more beetroots, garlic, uh, another red cabbage. Yeah, garlic, pretty much it. So down the end here I have some potted fruit trees. This is the kumquat. It's just, they've just started to turn a little bit yellow and they'll go orange and I love this. They're basically like little grape size oranges. The, um, the reason the leaves are all chewed is because I had major grasshopper infestations this year, which is a little bit weird. I haven't had that before, but it's got some new growth. And this is the white mulberry. I got this from a cutting from my permaculture course and it's done really well, but uh, they are deciduous, so it's just losing its leaves. Over here is a pineapple. I grew this from scraps. It's just from the top of a pineapple. Um, and I have another one over there. This is a purple chili. Let's see there. And I have a hibiscus because I do love hibis hibiscus and it was in the garden and I didn't want to get rid of it so I just put it in a pot. Um, and a little edible flower, pansy. He's a very busy kind of guy. Over here is my potting station. <laughs> um, looking a little bit sad now. I've sort of planted out most things and I've got a few left to find places for, um, and then I'm just waiting for the rest to sprout. Yeah, this is my, um, oh my God, mind blank, um, finger lime. This is the finger lime. It is, I think it's the pink one. Another pineapple that I grew from scraps. A little custard apple that I grew from a seed. Strawberries, which are looking a bit old now. Um, I'll just give you a quick look. This is 
our outdoor kitchen and bar area. We've got a pot belly fire, hanging gardens that Halen made me for my birthday. I love these hanging gardens. I haven't quite mastered the planting of them yet um, because they're so shallow in soil and they get really hot. It's, it's, it's a bit of a struggle to get things to live in here, but I've sort of gone from edibles to succulents because I feel like they are hardier. And I have this native, you can't really see it. It's actually sort of more on the roof now. <laughs> it's the Hardenbergia, I think it's called. It's got beautiful purple flowers. Um, and down here I have the Citronella geranium, which um, I planted here because it's great um, for getting rid of mozzies, like a natural insect repellent. It smells really, really good. It smells like citronella. So I've planted that right here next to our entertaining area. Um, some basil. We lit the fire the other night, so it's gone crispy, but it was pretty much finished anyway. Uh, some more edible flowers, some peas. There's some little Malabar spinach, climbing spinach, which I'll hopefully get growing up here. Parsley, more basil more edible flowers and a pea and my mint oh and this is our sitting area obviously I love this area it gets afternoon sun the sun sets right there behind the palm trees so it's beautiful I love sitting there for an afternoon wine or two all right so Great big concrete pad, which is great for growing veggies. Um, and then over here we have the back garden. So I'll just start in this corner. We have hollyhock, bananas, there's some strawberries that were under there. A random garlic that I mustn't have pulled out last year because I don't think I planted that. Um, then the massive rosemary, which I call the beehive, because as you can see, it literally hums with bees. And I love coming out here in the morning with my coffee and watching the bees. <laughs> I love to give me shit about that, but I love watching the bees. And there's so many different types of bees. I didn't know how many different types of bees. There's like native bees and honey bees, the blue banded bees. I need a beehive ASAP. But for now, this is my beehive. <laughs> um, so down here I have a banana capsicum, which has done really well. Um, it gets, got a little bit of shade from the rosemary over summer, so that worked out well. Some more edible flowers. Dianthus, Calendula, my pawpaw. Now this one is supposed to be um, the bisexual pawpaw, so it doesn't need to, to pollinate. It should be able to do it itself, but we'll have to wait and see. I haven't seen any flowers on it yet, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, behind there is some peas, which I'm going to climb up there. And this is probably my favorite tree in the garden. Um, it is my Fiji tree, or as they call it in Australia, it is pineapple guava, um, which really is quite a good name because it that's pretty much what it tastes like. It's sort of like a pineapple guava. <laughs> but um, coming from New Zealand, every house had Fijoas. We love Fijoas. I miss it so much they're not a fruit that travels well um you really need to pick them and eat them fresh so you don't find them very often in the supermarkets and when you do they're usually imported from new zealand and because they ripen off the tree they just continue to ripen and the flavor just changes completely so it was one of the first trees that i planted here i got this for my birthday from halen um 
and there's two of them. There's another one here. Both of them got completely cut off at the ground when they were little because of Tama running through the garden. Um, Tama's my dog, by the way. That guy over there. Um, but they came back to life and they are thriving. They are probably four years old now and I got my first Fijoa last year and this year I'm going to get about 10 Fijoas. So I'm pretty stoked with that. There's one here. There's a few more on. I have eaten a few already and one went missing. I'm pretty sure it got it fell off because it was like here and got mowed but it happens there's another one there another one there um, and so under here I have sweet potato this is a purple sweet potato it's purple on the inside it's purple on the outside um, it's really a really vibrant purple um, which is so interesting. I love growing weird and wonderful things. Things that you can't necessarily find um, in the supermarkets and stuff like that. Lots of heirloom vegetables and different varieties. So over here is a lavender. I got this as a cutting from an Airbnb that we stayed at when my mum and dad came over. And it was like just a tiny little piece and I've propagated it and it's now all through the garden. Uh, I love lavender, I love the smell. Um, and it's such a pretty plant. My lemon tree. It was a pretty big prune, it still needs more of a prune but I didn't want to cut it until the lemons were ripe. So once these ones ripen, I'll cut that down again. Um, it was the only tree that edible plant that was here when we moved in. The rest um, I've planted everything else except for the lemon tree. Fijoa, another Fijoa. Down here, some edible flowers, some garlic, a random tomato that is just growing. It's not going to survive, but I'm just leaving it. We have hibiscus, which I will probably remove and put another edible tree there. Uh, garlic, hollyhock, lettuce, which self-seeded. There was heaps of lettuce and self-seeded, so I've sort of just picked them up and moved them around. There's one in the planter box. Um, red cabbage. Um, and this is my Hawaiian guava. So I had this in a pot for ages and I've planted it out about a year ago and it's done really well it's got heaps of new growth but I haven't had any flowers on it yet or any fruit obviously so I'm excited to see if that will happen in the next year along here I have my kale tree it's such a pretty color look at that it's getting pretty tall and I have corn flour, it's edible flowers, um, hollyhock, a rosella, hibiscus, which you can make edible teas from. And over here is my other mulberry. So this one was another cutting that I got and it's just gone so wild. Like, look at that, the leaves on it. I don't know why the leaves are so big, they're huge. I don't know if you can see, like, the size of my face. <laughs> um, and this is a white mulberry, so they taste so good. They taste like pure honey, really different to the black mulberries. And then behind me here, I have my strawberry guava, or it's also called cherry guava. I don't know, it's got a few names really prolific growing like I have just got so many guavas off this so I'm gonna try and make some heaps of different things with it um, one of the things I really want to make is like a strawberry guava wine so I need to learn how to do that um, sage chives 
This is the Cape Gooseberry or a ground cherry, some people call it. Um, it's got some little flowers on it. Um, what else we got here? Sweet potato that I just planted. This is a Hawaiian sweet potato. It's got like a different leaf on it. Um, and it's actually flowering, which I've never seen before, which is pretty cool. I grow this from just a scrap. You can probably even see it down there. There, just a scrap of sweet potato, and I got all of this growing. Uh, nasturtiums, which just pop up every year around this time. Dill. I love this dill plant. I use the flowers on everything. It's got like such a nice aniseed flavor. A hibiscus. This hibiscus has different colored flowers on it so i have tried to document it they're pretty much they range from like deep burgundy to purple lilac and bright pink all on the one plant so i have a little um what's it called highlight on my instagram where i've been saving the different colored flowers more lavender nasturtium these all start popping up now because it's cooling down. Um, they've, I've even found them in the grass, like, because I pulled heaps out and little seeds obviously got in the grass. Um, sweet potato. So I ripped all the sweet potato up um, and harvested it recently, so it's looking pretty sad. But I've left a few in and little violets starting to come back up. Banana, which is got major issues it doesn't get any sun really in this corner it's not a good spot for it so our block is 721 square meters pretty much grow all of my own vegetables I don't really need to buy any vegetables anymore um, this year I'm really trying to get my onions and garlic growing because that is something that I am still buying um, I use a lot of onions and garlic in my cooking so to be able to get that um, self-sufficient would be amazing um, fruit as well I'm still buying fruit but as you can see I have a heap of fruit trees um, I think I have 15 fruit trees all up so once they start producing I'll be pretty much self-sufficient in fruit and vegetables um, which is exciting it's it's like what I've always dreamed of doing and I'm just doing it in my own backyard in suburbia um, and I would love to put extra garden beds in here, um, but it hasn't happened yet, so maybe sometime in the future we will have more gardens in here, but for now it is for the dog to hang out on, just pretty much poo on, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed my garden tour. Um, let me know if you have any questions on any of the plants that I've got growing in here um, or anything like that. Yeah. Thanks for watching.